Teddy with you here in Southern California. It Six one, so he has a couple inches on Roman. Came in at 155 and a half for this middleweight fight. 23 and one with 18 knockouts. And his story's been told before with similar styled fighters from Colombia. A tough guy, South American, who feasts on local talent, runs up an impressive record of knockouts. Comes to the U.S. in June 08, puts forth a good effort against Peter Quillen in New York. Got him hurt in the fifth and in the seventh, but lost the decision. His best win was up in Montreal against Sebastian Demers in 2008. Came up with the upset there. More recently, a one-punch KO victim from Giovanni Lorenzo, who went on to fight for a title. And there is Roman Karmazin, 37 years old, 5'11", 158 and a half, 39 wins, 3 and 1, 25 knockouts. He grew up in tough circumstances in Russia. He started as a youth gymnast there, then fell in love with boxing as a teen. He served in the Army before the Soviet Union broke up. In 2005, he came to Vegas, upset then-junior middleweight champion Kasim the Dream Uma. Since then, a rocky road of impressive performances and mixed with disappointing results, he has now won three straight. Let's show you the latest victory. It came against Luis Dos Santos, May 9th, 09, and he would TKO the Brazilian. It would be a fourth round TKO victory for Karmazin. He's motivated for his boys. I have uh, three sons at home and uh, they expect me to win and they want me to become world champion again and, and that's a huge motivation and uh, I know professionally that to lose a fight like this uh, the road back is extremely difficult um, and an added bonus which which is very important to me because of who I am and where I come from is should I become world champion again uh, I'd be the first Russian fighter to ever become world champion in two different weight classes and for me that's that's of great importance to, to get in the history books time for teddy's keys to victory it's the beginning of a new year a new decade and a new season of the friday night fight plan one thing that's not new though is that both fighters in the main event will be looking to do what they usually do knock the other guy out let's see how they're going to do it so I was going to play Miranda, I'm going to play Carmazin. Now, Carmazin likes to control range. He's got a low left hand. He likes to step back a little bit and look for the counter left hook. Maybe get Miranda to reach with that powerful right hand a little too soon. Bang! If that happens, well, Carmazin has a good year. But, fine line between victory and defeat. If Miranda, who's looking for that right hand, if Carmazin doesn't time it right and he starts that hook too soon, he gets hit with the right hand. And then, of course, all his New Year's resolutions come true. Either way, not only the ball drops, but somebody, good chance to drop here tonight. Happy New Year. It's not going to be happy for both these guys, only for one of them. Happy New Year. Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the introductions. The colors of the Colombian flag. He weighed in at a trim and ready 155 and one half pounds. His record 20 wins, three losses, and two draws, with 18 big wins coming by way of knockout from Barranquilla, Colombia. Please welcome Mr. Knockout Dionisio Miranda. His opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corner in this 12-round title elimination main event, wearing white trunks with blue lettering. He weighed in at 158 and one half pounds. His record 39 wins, three losses and one draw, with 25 wins coming by way of knockout from St. Petersburg, Russia. Please welcome the former IBF junior middleweight champion of the world, introducing Roman made in hell You see Roman flanked by Freddie Roach. As they come out. 
Time now, our referee in charge to give instructions, Dr. James Jen Kin. Scheduled for 12 with James Jen Kin as the referee. Trunks are high, low blow hair. Mouthpiece. 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 Gentlemen, obey my command. Let's go. So I feel like to announce a little bit in the first Rocky fight. The Takate ring experience. As you can see, the 14-year career of Parmesan. It's also included a title run. Beat Uma, lost, was outboxed to Corey Spinks. And stylistically, that's the kind of guy that has given Parmesan troubles. That's not the kind of guy that Miranda is. Teddy? In the first Rocky fight, you know, the announcer said a lot of Italians here, a lot of Russians here. That's right. You see Carmenson well represented tonight with some of his countrymen. Miranda, Any Eastern look... Europeans on the card, Teddy, in this area of Glendale, a big Armenian population. Well, Miranda's going to upset the parties that might happen later on for victories for the Russians. He's going to do it with the right hand. That is what he looks to do. Land the big right hand. And sometimes he'll set it up a little bit. He's a little, becoming a little tricky, Miranda, of how to get that right hand across. You know, you have a weapon like that, you have to have a way to convey it to the target. It has no use if you don't have a way to get it to the target. And one of the ways Miranda tries to get it to the target, he'll bend like that. Like he's going to go to the body with it sometimes, Joe. And when he bends to go to the body, instead he'll throw it up top and try to catch you by surprise. Something we'll look for with that right hand. You know, Miranda, two of his three losses by knockout. So you wonder about his chin. And you wonder if it's going to be tested, how it's going to, how it's going to wind up dealing with that test tonight. Good combination punching by Roman. And you see how much he will go to the body in the midst of those combinations. And you see he likes to control range a little bit, Carmenson. He used that left hand as a rain finder. He tried to take a little step back, draw you into a little trap. And again, with Carmenson, look for that counter left hook when he steps back. And look for an opportunity, maybe, with Carmenson with the right hand, if he sees that slow jab from Miranda. Big sweeping right hand from Miranda was unable to connect. You know, to me, Miranda is built like your prototypical puncher. I mean, to me, a lot of guys think they're the guys that, you know, look like they were hanging out in Venison Beach in California, you know, doing all the, all the weightlifting. But you like the wiry go, guy that can go. create some speed on that punch and leverage downward on like that a, punch. Like a Bob Foster. Yeah. The guys guy that are quite. wiry. The guys that uh, look like they need a meal. You know, the analogy there would be kind of like a, a cobra coiled up and able to snap out. If they explode on you, they get, as you said before, they get leverage with that wiry frame. And that's what Miranda does and has done in scoring 18 knockouts in his career. And that's what he's going to look to do as long as he can tonight. And again, you see Carmenson, he gives you different dimensions. He steps back, looks for counters. End of one of our 12-rounder. Whether you... I was talking about the dipping that Miranda likes to do right there. You see, he dips a little bit, and what he's looking to do is go up there. He's looking to take his opponent's eye off the target. Have his opponent look low, and then punch high. The Anicio Miranda ranked in the top 10 at 160 pounds, according to the IBF. And Roman Karma's in number three, so this fight is listed as a title eliminator. Dan Rayfield, who's in studio tonight, has Karmas in number seven among his top ten middleweights. We told you earlier that Karmazin has a sense of desperation. The former titleist says, this is my one last chance to be a world champion, and this will determine my future. He says, if he doesn't get it done tonight, it's over. The career is over. We saw the punch numbers in round number one. 16 to 14 edge for Roman, but a fairly evenly fought opening round here in this 12-rounder. Miranda has lost two of his last four, but he's also nine years younger, which may Riva, Riva. play here tonight. 
Miranda having to overcome what many fighters are challenged to do, and that is in one of those recent losses, it was a spectacular one-punch knockout that put him down. Came against Giovanni Lorenzo back in February of last year. He then came back last June with a TKO win of his own back in his homeland of Colombia. We saw him look decent against Peter Quill and thought that he was actually going to pull that out in the late goings and then had the upset of Sebastian Demirs. And Demirs had run up a very good record fighting on his home turf up in Montreal. And that's not easy to go up to Montreal with those hometown fighters up there with all the support they get. Well, Carlson, we talk about Miranda being knocked out two times and two of his three losses by knockout. You wonder about his chin. Carlson has been knocked out once too. And in that knockout four fights ago, I was looking at the tape getting ready for the work here. And I tell you, I didn't like the way he reacted to punches, the way he took punches in that fight. He looked to me like a guy that did not have a good set of whiskers. That was against the veteran Alex Bunima back in January of 2008. And in the fight previous to that, he looked sensational against Tara Garcia. That was a fight that I was at under Mayorga and Vargas. And I thought he couldn't look better, and then he put in that effort just a few months later. Well, talking about that word effort, right now the guy putting in more effort is Miranda. And I think he's carrying around just by having a little bit more of an effort. Nothing complicated, nothing fancy, but just pushing the envelope a little bit, trying to be the boss. There was a good example of it moments ago. Didn't land cleanly, but just being the aggressor. And again, you see Carmenson. There's a right hand that lands as Carmenson ties up, Teddy. Carmenson likes to step out, look for counter opportunities, and sometimes he leads with that little left hook in front. Miranda Carmenson, end of two. ESP. Friday night fights, our first visit to Glendale, California. John Wayne got his nickname growing up here and is also the home of Baskin Robbins. Didn't you love Baskin Robbins, a little Jamocha almond fudge, Teddy, back in the day? No, but I could see you did. Oh, absolutely. Very passionate about my Baskin Robbins. Uh, and these fight fans, very passionate here ringside as they are happy to have the pro game back in town. They haven't had a lot of fight cards through the years here. Just a sprinkling. This is the second in seven months, and it is being headlined by these two, the Anicio Miranda and Roman Carmazin. Well, you said just a sprinkling. I just saw a sprinkling of what might be coming later on this round. What do you see? Well, Miranda just threw a pretty good right hand downstairs, and then I knew he was going to walk stairs with it, and that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what I was just about to say. I saw him throw a good right hand to the body a moment ago, to Carlson, and in my mind, he was setting up the right hand up top, and he's landed it. And again, I don't like the legs. Not at all. Or the whiskers of Carlson. The 37-year-old former belt holder has weak knees right now, and still two minutes to go here in the third. And there's, again, all the danger comes from that right hand. So right now, if you're Carlson, you want to just stay away from one punch, that right hand. He and just threw him off balance that time. And Von Carmesen, and I move it all, I'm going to move to my right, away from that punch. The punch that just put me in this condition. I am not going to stand in front, and I'm not going to move to the left. I'm going to move to the right again, away from what hurt me. Well, better yet, I'm going to tie the son of a gun up exactly. and get as much time as I can to kill the clock and get out of this round. Right now, 75 seconds he needs to burn. He looks a little more stable as he goes with just a simple flurry to the body there. More space now. He almost ate a sweeping right hand that time for Miranda. There's an overhand right. And again, everything that's going to do damage is going to come from only one side with Miranda, the right hand. Miranda has proven two things this round so far. One, as we said right from the beginning, and we even said in the opening, he can punch with the right hand. But the other he's proven right now to the detriment of himself is that he's not a finisher. Went on the attack after having him hurt in the first minute, then the low of the minute minute, and now in the final minute here, you can see that Carmazin more steady on his feet as Miranda slows here in the final 30 seconds. And you see the one dimension of Miranda. 
only the right hand is representing a danger to Carmison. There's nothing else Carmison has to worry about. And therefore, it's become a little easier to survive this round. He gets hit again with the right hand. End of three. Carmison was hurt early. As Freddie Roach tends to Roman Carmison, he was hurt in the first minute of that third round by Miranda. And he was hurt by a right hand, a right hand that I thought was set up early. With well, right here, you see a miss right hand, and then of course you see the one that lands. Does the damage? You see the legs start to go a little bit. Scheduled for 12, an IBF title eliminator. Again, you see the right hand there that lands. Now, if I'm Carmison, I'm moving this way, away from that right hand. I am not, if anything, I am not moving to the left into that punch. I already know what that side means. It means damage. It means a headache. Roman Carmison said, I've been in these type of fights before. This one, though, is a do-or-die situation. It's all or nothing for his career, he feels, against Miranda. Let's look at the power punches from that third round. Miranda landed 16, and now a little bit of a spark from Roman. You know, again, you know, having power is only part of the equation. We try to teach as best we can when we're doing the broadcast to those young kids out there that maybe want to go into the gym and take a chance on being a fighter one day, maybe having their hands raised one day and being a champion. And again, it's not just about how strong you are, how fit you are, how much physical talent you have. It's not just about power. Yeah, Miranda has the power, but to me that last round, Joe, he set it up by using his head, by using his brain. He went to the body with the right hand to Carlson, had Carlson thinking about that, and then he went to the head and was able to get it in. And the power means nothing without a device to convey it to the target. He was able to execute it in that third round. Now placing just a range-finding jab out there. There comes the right hand, and Carmazin, as Moreno stepped forward, had a couple shots to the body. Well, the advantage of Miranda is his greatest weakness. What I mean by that is his advantage is the right hand that's already hurt Carmazin in this fight. But that is his greatest weakness because that's all he looks for. And if you're smart and you're experienced like Carmazin, well, you can pick it up. He telegrams it, and you take that away from him. And if you take that away from him, you have a very good chance of winning the fight. And in this case, you have a chance of coming back from behind in the fight. And again, Carmenson has that chance. All he has to do is worry about one side with Miranda. Again, if I'm Carmenson, I'm moving to my right, away from that right hand. I'm not gonna let him beat me with that. There was a clash of heads, and there is a stream of blood now coming from the left eye of Miranda. Pedro Valeria has work in front of him now. There was a clash of heads at the end of the fourth round. Look at the left eye of Miranda and Teddy. Let's go back and watch that in the final seconds of the round. Here it comes. That's bad technique that causes that. Take a look right here, the second look. And what I mean by that, of course, it's a mishap. Of course, it's unfortunate. But it's something that could be avoided. Miranda's head was in front of his legs, was falling in. And you should not fall in that way when you're throwing a punch. And that's exactly why that head clash took place. Now, we have four rounds complete. So if that cut determines that this fight cannot continue on, and right now they do have it under control, we will go to the scorecards for a technical decision using the unified rules here for this IBF title eliminator main event. Again, your punches should lead the way. Your legs should take you there. But when your head starts taking you there, starts getting ahead of your legs, you're going to get clashes, you're going to get out of position, you're going to have problems.
Let's look at Teddy's scorecard through four. 38-37, you gave Miranda a 10-8 third round when Carmazin did not go down but was clearly damaged, hurt in that opening minute of that round. You're seeing more and more opportunities for that right hand, the power punch of Miranda. Every once in a while, Carmazin leads with that left hook in front. And when you lead with a left hook in front of a right hand puncher, you're going to eat some right hands. Mm -hmm. And also, he falls in a little bit, Joe. Watch, Carlson. When you get close to him, he'll reach in a little bit to try to grab you, to try to smother you. And as he reaches in or falls in, there's a window of opportunity to catch him if you punch with him. See, there it is. You see, right there is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. And that's what Miranda and his people should be looking for. When you put pressure on Carmison, watch again. Some pressure gets put on him. He's going to reach in to grab you, to kind of smother you a little bit, like right there. And when he does that, again, if you punch with him, you're going to find him. You're the crowd here in Glendale chanting for Roman. Again, Try to see, turn over that left hand. You see another example of Miranda's strength being his weakness. Yeah, he's got a good right hand, but look, he looks for the right hand so much that a lot of other times he's not doing anything. Top box and break lane. And it allows Carmenson to survive and have moments as he's having right now. Miranda, Carmazin, end of five. More to come. Don't go anywhere. Take a look at an example of Carmazin here falling in. Now, right here, you see how he falls in there? Right now, it's already too late to throw the punch. But just as he was falling in, there was an opportunity to throw a punch. Let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you here in Glendale, California. Round six of our 12-round main event. Such an important fight for these two. Miranda ranked in the top 10 at 160 pounds, looking for a title shot. Carmazin, a titleist at 154, now a middleweight, looking for one last, trying to become the first Russian fighter to win belts in two different weight classes. He says that's very important to him to be in the history books. This coming Sunday, ESPN has a special edition of the NBA. King James and the Cavaliers against Portland. It's on ESPN and ESPN360.com at 9 Eastern. Stop boxing, break lane. You know, you look at a punch and sometimes... As a trainer, you know what I think? What? Well, I wonder at least, is it a great gift or is it a great curse? Well, you, you had many big punchers throughout your career as a trainer. And, you know, it can be either one. You know, it can be a great gift that it can get you out of trouble at any time. It can keep your opponent a little bit leery of you. But it can be a great curse that you don't develop other parts of your game. Your jab, your mental attitude, your consistency. You know, those things don't get developed. And as you watch Miranda, he's got the great gift of that right hand that already showed itself in hurting Carmazin. But the curse of it is that you see that he hasn't developed much of it. He's not using his left hand for a tall guy like Miranda. Maybe if he didn't have that great gift of the right hand, maybe he would have been forced to develop that left hand more and make it talk to you a little bit. If you weren't with us bit, earlier. You know, hook a little bit. Yeah. You know, do different things with it. Earlier tonight in the third round, he was able to land that big, dangerous right hand. Was Miranda. And Carmazin was hurt badly in the early going of the third round. Again, watch for the opportunity to me for Miranda to score a big punch again. And so far, he's the big punch in this fight. Carmenson, when you put pressure on him, he's going to fall into you. To smother you, to grab you. 
And I think he leaves himself vulnerable for about two feet. Came in with a right hand. Triple left to the body to close out this round by Parmesan. 2010 season, year number 12 and year number 30 in terms of boxing on ESPN in the 12th year of our Friday Night Fight franchise. And all year long, we'll be celebrating 30 years of boxing. Take a look back at Dwight Braxton earlier tonight with Brian in studio. Next week, we will have another edition of the celebration of 30 years of this sport on the network. Well, Miranda might be the better punch, and he's shown that tonight. But he's not better in other areas. As we talked about, is it a curse or a gift having power? Miranda not using the left hand enough, not doing enough of other things, and he's allowing Carmenson to use his experience. Former world champion, 36 years old. The last round was a round where I thought Miranda was winning, Joe. And then I thought maybe Carmenson stole the round right from under the nose of Miranda in that last 20 seconds. It felt that way. He came on, rallied, had that flurry, and then the three shots, the left hand to the body, and then went upstairs. You know, you see the power of Miranda, but you can also see some of the crudeness, the undeveloped parts of Miranda, who hasn't learned some of the finer parts of the art of pugilism. Again, using his height, using his jab. For the most part, Miranda, a lot of heart. But depends on that right hand, probably 70% of the time. There's a little bit of a jab yeah, from We just Miranda. saw good work with the left hand from Miranda. Now left hook from Carmazin. Now you saw a good left hand from Miranda, but what was bad was that. He gave up his height. He used his jab. But he didn't stay tall. He came in short, and he allowed Carmenson to score well because of that. Four punch combination, two downstairs, two upstairs from the former junior middleweight titleist. See, Joe, you've seen a jab from Miranda's spots, but not an educated one, not a productive one, a jab where he's being aggressive when he shouldn't be aggressive. Much more pronounced stream of blood now coming down the left side of the face of Dionisio Miranda. There was a clash of heads at the end of the fourth round. You saw it there for a moment. The blood started right away, and that has not gone his way. It's not streaming into the eye, but you can see how much more severe the cut is. And again, the cut man who's become a very important player in this fight in the corner of Miranda is Pedro Valerio. Dionisio Miranda, Pedro Valero, the cut man. Trying to grease up, coagulate that left eye. And as soon as he removes the pressure, you can see that the blood already starts to come right out. Heading into round number eight. Such an important fight for the future of both men. Karmazin has stated the goal inspired by his three children is to finish up his career strong and win another title trying to become the first ever russian to be a champion in two different weight classes miranda has had opportunities before he's been in an ibf eliminator before he was knocked out in that fight here's an opportunity to get back to that position joe and teddy with you ringside now glad to be joined by the trainer for Roman Karmazin, Freddie Roach. Freddie, how are you? Glad you're with us. Give us your assessment so far. Um, he's doing pretty well. I mean, he's boxing well. I mean, this guy's got a big right hand. He's heavy-handed with a good puncher. He hurt him. He's, Roman was going under the shots a little bit and get hit a little bit deep in the back of the head a little bit. It affected him. It knocked him off balance for a little while there. But he's, he's doing okay now. I, I think he needs to use his combinations and use that in-and-out motion a little bit more. Freddie, to me, it comes down to really evaluating it in a way where your guy can do more things, has more dimension 
than Miranda, but Miranda can do one thing real good. He can punch with the right hand. So to me, that would be utmost in your mind. Keep my guy away from the right hand. Don't get beat by that one punch. Yeah, definitely. And the thing is, that's why I, I'm trying to get him to use a double jab to break that overhand right up. And um, he's doing a pretty good job with, with it right now. And last round, he was very good, but he needs to be, uh, you know, use combinations and, and, and not stand there and let this guy trade with him cause, because this guy is very heavy handed. Thanks, Freddie. Thank you very much. Roman Karmazin, who lives in St. Petersburg, Russia, but comes here about three weeks before his U.S. based fights to finish up with Freddie at the wildcard gym just down the road in Hollywood. He came stateside on December 10th for this bout. To me, right now, Karmazin's moving the wrong way, to the left. Now, he may change that soon, but when he moves to his left, he moves into the pad, or at least the potential pad, Joe of that right hand of Miranda that we already know can do damage. Again, if I'm Carlson, if I'm using my legs, it's to move to my right, away from that punch. Got away from that left hook from Miranda. And he just stabbed him with a jab there before tying up on the inside. Final 30 seconds of round number eight. And again, you see Miranda Tall fighter, not using that height, and there's the right hand, the punch that can always get him back in his fight. And it's better served when he uses the jab, when he doesn't just load up and chuck it. When he uses that jab to set it up, he has a much better chance of finding a target. Four rounds to go between Miranda and Karmazin. The Anicio Miranda, who grew up the son of a fisherman in Colombia, one of seven children, took up the fight game, ran his record big in Colombia with all the knockouts, came to the U.S., has had his opportunities to get up to the top, and tonight, in the form of Roman Karmazin, standing opposite him, a former titleist, a big opportunity, and so far he has taken advantage of it. Shaped up to be a very highly competitive main event. Good jab there that time by Miranda. Round number nine in this IBF title eliminator. Double jab, came with the right hand, missed it over the top. But as Teddy has said, said, oh, there's a big right hand. He didn't need to set that up at all. It just came with a thud. Once again, two minutes left. He was in this position in the third round where he had to survive for two minutes. But now in round number nine, can the former belt holder do so? Miranda on the attack. And now Miranda trying to be a better finisher. Going to the body with the right hand and then going upstairs. Not just going upstairs. And even mixing in a left hook a little bit. Roman does not look good at all. The key here is how... Miranda controls range. If he falls in with his shots, Carlson can survive. But if Miranda keeps a certain range with his punches, gets extension on him. See, he's falling in a little too close right now, Miranda. And that's why the punches are going past Carlson. Miranda has to keep his range like that. And let the punches go off where he can get full extension, full power, and not smother himself. One minute to go. Karmazin trying to survive. Miranda, he's got that big right hand ready again. Now Karmazin mounts a moment of an attack. Again, early in the fight, we saw Miranda unleash that power, but we also saw that he hadn't learned how to be a finisher yet. We're seeing that again. See, this is where the right hand should be set up. Where there's good range, where the jab sets the table for it. That box of Brickley, let him go. Again, there's opportunities for Miranda. I don't know if he sees them, but there's opportunities when Carmison falls in a little bit. Coming to the end of nine, a big round for Miranda.
as Freddie Roach will try to settle down Roman Karmazin. Alexi Fuchs is doing the cuts and also translating okay. in the corner. Okay, Roman. Okay. All right. Now we can't get pulled. pulling away from that right hand. Then you got the fifth here. Roman, let me look problem. at the side. Roman. Oh. Don't get him momentum. You don't have Let's take a look back. At the thudding right hand from Miranda Teddy. See, that time he used the jab to set it up. It was still a little looping. It wasn't exactly a Joe Lewis right hand. But again, the jab sets it up, and the right hand gets right there. And you know what you saw? A little bit of a pick up there, too, that helped that right hand land? Carmison, we talked about it early. Carmison leading with the left hook a little bit in front and as he led with the left hook in front he left the door open and that door allowed a right hand to crash home round number 10 trying to tee up that right hand again is miranda this would be a big win for him against an established name now at 160 pounds these two have come up in weight both ranked in the top 10 in the ibf Dan Rayfield coming into this fight had Roman Karmazin ranked number seven. You see the stream of blood coming down the face of Miranda. He's been dealing with that since a clash of heads at the end of round number four. Let's look at the power punches generated in the last round, and you can see the advantage for Miranda landing 16 of the 31 thrown. See, again, I think Miranda's a better fighter when he stays at a range to get full extension on our punches. When he falls in and he moves in too close, his punches go right past Carmenson. Like right there, the right hand yep. goes right past him. But when he keeps his distance, when he holds his ground and keeps his feet set, uses that long left hand, he's got a much better chance of being dangerous with the right hand. That's what I meant early on when I said Miranda. You could see where he has not been developed. You know, you could see the pure power that he has, but you could also see where he is crude in areas where he just hasn't learned things. Does the old Russian warrior have one more fight in him here? Can he rally here in these last few rounds? And again, give both fighters a lot of credit for. And there's a right hand. What oh. a turnaround. Now Miranda struggles to get to his feet. And it looked like his feet were tangled. Now he's turning southpaw. So that tells you that he's really confused. And he's desperate, turning southpaw right now. Now he turns back to orthodox. Can you believe this? Roman Karmazin, a spectacular knockout, come from behind victory to open up the Friday night fight season. Wow! Absolutely unbelievable comeback from the Russian. We have said it time and again. You never know what you're going to see, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen in this game. That was as unexpected as anything. As Karmazin was tough to just survive in round nine, and he comes back and scores a knockout victory in round ten. Well, we talked about Miranda... Is it a gift or a curse having a terrific right hand? Or was a gift early as it put Miranda ahead in the fight as he heard Carmison several times? But it was a curse later as he looked for only the right hand, didn't use his jab enough, and gave an opportunity 
for Carmenson to survive because Miranda was only looking for one shot and to finally make a tremendous comeback. And here is that comeback by the 37-year-old Carmenson. And again, we talked to you. You didn't really see a punch there. Let's take another look at it. Because I just saw his legs tangled up, but I didn't really see a damaging punch. And it was the right hand before the one to miss. It was just on the tip of the chin. Didn't look like a devastating punch on the tip of the chin. And then, of course, the second one, which was the end of the fight. And that right hand, a lot more solid. Two right hands. Watch the first one, and then the last one is just solid as could be. And again, the last one, Carmenson's feet are under him. You can see right there, the first one, and again, he takes a little step. He adjusts to Miranda stepping back, and that punch is flush. This crowd erupts. They were supporting Carmenson all night long. Things were not going good, and then he delivered in dramatic fashion. And for the official particulars, we send it up to the ring to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 34 seconds in round number 10. A referee in charge, Dr. James Jenkins, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout. The winner of the IBF middleweight title eliminator, Roman made in hell. He's got a nickname that tells of his tough background growing up. But when he's been in the ring at his best, it has been pure heaven. And right now, Karmazin has a lot to look forward to as he stays alive in his quest to get back to the top in a new weight class. We will take a break. When we come back, Teddy's analysis will wrap it up in another look at the spectacular comeback from Roman. Ready to 